Hey everybody, welcome in. It's Tuesday, and that's Octa Day. And thank you all for coming. So uh, crazy things happening out there in the market. It's been a crazy the last seven days. And let's analyze a lot of the data. So the question is, are we in a holding pattern? Are we going to go up? Are we going to go down? And we're going to look at all the data. And uh, there's so many uh, fascinating things in this little story today. Uh, we'll just jump in. And again, thank you all for being here. Thank you for the likes. Thank you to the mods in the chat. Appreciate each and every one of you from all over the world, including those early risers in Australia. I wonder is Cybertooth Tiger there. And Gail's back. <laughs> that's awesome. He's in Patreon. Well, that's cool. And of course, none of this is investment advice. It's just entertainment, just data-driven observations, charts you will never see anywhere else on the planet, and interpretation of those charts, which what matters. Matt in Vegas. Wow. See you soon. Anyway, that's uh, also, by the way, if you want to amplify your intelligence, subscribe to the channel. If you want to remain... <laughs> disadvantage, let's say, during the AI revolution, no need to subscribe. So I think you know what to do. Let's start with the good news. Last week, we started with the bad news because it was a predominance of bad news. But this week, good news. So let's look at the crypto market over the last seven days divided by Bitcoin. Again, everything denominated in Bitcoin here. You can see a couple of dark green spots. Uniswap, Solana, XRP, XLM, and then kind of slightly less dark green, Cardano, Doge, Avalanche, Hedera, and a bunch more chain link even on the move and less than that the light green kind of the eth by the way uh the color code dark green means like 20 percent plus gainers for the week uh i think that lighter green is about 10 percent gainers for the week and then the light light green is just above i guess zero and three percent versus bitcoin but let's flip skiers and look at what the market actually did well bitcoin's on the move it's very volatile it's up and down but it still is in that kind of holding pattern if we look at the gains for the week, not that impressive, but right now, um, Bitcoin is actually up a little bit, 29.8, so it's up 100 bucks since I took the snapshot. But you can see in dollars, big movers for the week, uh, the two dark green spots, XRP, Monero, Solana, uh, it's, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Ethereum also beat Bitcoin, and we are seeing, and I've been talking about this for a long time, well, not a long time, but like a week or two, that there are early signs that the alts are really beginning to run. But when they run, it's explosive. When Bitcoin runs, it can go 2 3 5%. When alts run, it's 20 30 40 60%. That's the difference. The multiples are much higher. I think I covered that on the weekend as well in the Q&A. Let's look at the stock market as well. <clears throat> this was taken as well about an hour ago. Tesla is up 8% for the week, the last seven days. It's doing its pre-earn pre-earnings run, which it typically does. Amazon, 3%. Apple, 2.38%. Microsoft, 10%. NVIDIA, 12%. And some of the big financials are doing very well too. JP Morgan, the America's bank, is gobbling up all the assets of the smaller banks and doing very well too. So that's it. But again, one of the reasons this channel is about disruption is because that's where the alpha is, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take your eye off the disruption ball to use a soccer analogy for the team in the UK that's out here. I see you guys and gals. So let's talk about proxy discounts. Uh, here, this today, we saw actually the GBTC discount over Bitcoin hit 25% yesterday. And it's back up to 26% right now. The ETH premium over ETH is 37.24%. It was 55% three weeks ago, 45% two weeks ago. Now, nearly 35%. So that's a huge move. And that was a beautiful pair trade as well. Um, and I see you there too. Thank you for being here. So let's talk about one thing that is kind of different. You know, this, this program every week is looking at data and charts, especially on chain. And on chain, nothing is better than Bitcoin. And we can see some things here that are quite fascinating. And you always hear me say, <laughs> the last eight months, this time is different. This time is different. This time is different. I'm well aware that they are the most four most dangerous words in the English language, especially in investing. But everything I see is different. Therefore, I say it. So let's jump in here and look at this one. This is the yearly Bitcoin absorption rate for exchanges and refers to the net flow of Bitcoin in or out of crypto exchanges 
over the last one year period. And when the absorption rate is negative, like you see there on the right, this means Bitcoin is being withdrawn from exchanges, net drainage. Um, and a lot more is being pulled off than there is being deposited. Now, a negative absorption rate is usually seen as a bullish sign because it indicates less selling pressure, suggesting investors are holding onto their Bitcoin instead of selling it on exchanges. And in this case, the current, this is so important, the current yearly Bitcoin absorption rate for exchanges is minus 100% which means all Bitcoin being moved out of exchanges is not being replaced with new deposits. Miners are doing OTC deals with big whale buyers like Sailor, etc. Uh, Coinbase for their OTC counter, etc. What this suggests is, again, to repeat, investors are holding onto the Bitcoin. There's much more knowledge, much more education, and this indicates much higher prices in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Let's go back. The peak absorption rate was even more negative at minus 170% just at the beginning of 2023. All right. That's nearly, <laughs> that's just, it's just massive. And this extreme negative rate obviously is driving a lot of hyper bullish sentiment. In my mind, the market doesn't realize it yet. Now, the most important thing, when we compare, we're in the 2023 bull run, which began very late November 2022, uh, when we compare the analog time to, say, the 2017 similar situation, it was the complete opposite. You can see there was a lot. Okay, in 2017, the absorption rate was very positive, meaning Bitcoin was being deposited into exchanges a lot more than being withdrawn. So again, this is very bullish. This time is different. That supply crunch is coming, ladies and gentlemen. So let's look at some more data. And good news for all of you, 73% of Bitcoin holders are now in profit. This is comparing the long-term holder group, LTHs. We find that the situation is relatively less extreme. 73% of the holdings are in a profitable state. And it suggests that about 25% of the supply, well, 27% to be the long-term holder supply was acquired during the 2021-2022 cycle at prices higher than 30,000. Okay, we're still early, but that means most people's cost basis is under that magical 30K number, which again is big news. People are making money. People are happy. They're more bullish. They're more positive. Now, let's talk about another fact of how early we are. And sorry about all this early on excitement. After starting last week with bad news, I had to get some revenge. So this is chain analysis here uh, from Glassnode. And it looks like at the number of Bitcoin addresses holding greater than 0 0.01 Bitcoin, okay? Basically, anybody with a little bit of a bag, which is a good position to start off with. And uh, if, you, if you zoom out, okay, we see here the total number holding greater than 0 0.01 Bitcoin is 12.122 million, okay, addresses. So, so park that in your minds first. Second of all, I'm very aware that there are 44 million unique Bitcoin addresses that hold a non-zero balance. But there's a lot of people with crumbs in their address, which is basically nothing. Therefore, what I like about this chart, it starts at 0 0.01 plus Bitcoin, all the way up to the big whales that hold you know, hundreds of thousands. But the key thing here, all right, if you assume the average address rolling up to one person becomes about three addresses per person, this technically means not 0.015% of all people hold Bitcoin on the planet, but it's actually 0.05% of people. So if you are out there, and I reckon, you know, when you talk about this 12 million addresses, it's more like 4 million people. 4 million have greater than 0.01 Bitcoin. You take 4 million people, you divide that by 8 billion people, that's 0.05% of the population of this planet. We are very early, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're here, if you have a little Bitcoin, it's a, it's a very, very rarefied air to be in. So let's look at some money flows now. Uh, digital asset investment products saw 137 million of inflows last week. And uh, this is the last, the last four weeks have been bombastic. You can see all those blue lines there. And the total inflows for the last four weeks, now total, 
three quarters of a billion dollars, representing the largest run of inflows since 2021. And we all know that was a bull market. Uh, Bitcoin pulled in about 140 million, and that was a big chunk, 99% of all inflows. Short Bitcoin had some drainage, which is also good too. Let's break that down to how the money was dispersed. As we know, the lion's share went to the big daddy Bitcoin, 140 million. Um, short Bitcoin saw a 12th week of outflows. Very bullish too, ladies and gentlemen. When people aren't going short, that's a bullish sign. Uh, a combination of recent price appreciation and outflows have seen the short Bitcoin total assets under management fall from their April $198 million peak to just $50 million approximately right now. And the recent price appreciation in Ethereum has not been followed with inflows, though. And that shows you it's probably people are kind of buying it directly. Uh, they had about nearly 2 million, 1.6 million of outflows last week. And then we saw some other little inflows. Litecoin, 300,000. Solana, half a million. Polygon, half a million. Coincidentally, Polygon and Solana are very, very similar in many ways. And they both have the same money flow. 100,000 into Cardano. And then 300k into some rando tokens that are out there. So all in all, positive money flow too. Let's look at a little bit more on-chain. This is the on-chain market cap. And I always say follow the money. This on-chain slide is following the money too. Now, money, what this basically says, money still being invested in Bitcoin at a very steady and moderate pace. The realized cap is a well-known measure that helps us understand the actual amount of money flowing into Bitcoin. Think of it as, uh, I think they call it the on-chain market cap. Now, this represents the total profits and losses from all past Bitcoin transactions, all of them. And currently, the realized cap is almost 400 billion, showing that the money is consistently being put into Bitcoin throughout 2023. And as the realized cap increases, it means that Bitcoin is being purchased. And if it is being sold, it's being sold at higher prices than it's been bought at indicating a slight increase in new demand for the Bitcoin asset this year. So again, more bullishness. So let's look at a little bit of a other thing as well. Stablecoin redemptions. Uh, you, we can also gauge the overall direction of the digital asset market by comparing the realized caps of Bitcoin and Ethereum to the supply of stablecoins. And this metric shows that the most capital inflows have gone to Bitcoin and ETH, uh, 21.98 into Bitcoin. That's billion dollars, 18 billion into ETH. And uh, you can see here as well, the stable coins have fallen by 10.4 billion in aggregate supply, driven by large redemptions, especially of USDC, that we just circle, and BUSD, the Binance coin as well. And this trend is well established, suggesting investors are increasingly favoring the two major, major digital assets over Bitcoin. Follow the money, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and a proof of that as well, this is from Macro Micro. You can see I added a little green arrow showing you the inverse relationship between gold, which is Bitcoin, and that teal color, which is stablecoin balances. And as the stablecoin balance rises, Bitcoin price falls and vice versa. As the stablecoin balance falls, Bitcoin price rises. You know, it's uh, it's that simple. So if you see a spike in stable coins, be concerned, but you might be too late anyway. So let's look at another one final glass node chart um, before we jump ahead to other more exciting things, because it is Okta after all, on-chain technical analysis, but this is the realized cap and it measures the total value of Bitcoin that has moved in the past year and calculated from each Bitcoin's last movement. Now, the drawdown is the percentage drop from an asset's all-time high. And during bear markets, investors tend to sell their Bitcoin, leading to the capital outflow as they seek to minimize losses. And in 2022, the realized cap drawdown reached minus 18.8%. That doesn't mean loss in Bitcoin, but it means the drawdown from the realized cap. And that is the second steepest value in the history of Bitcoin, only beaten by the bear market of 2011, 2012. And back then, very few knew what this is all about. Now, the other thing that's important is to compare the drawdown. You can see that this bear market was worse than the previous two. Part of that, 
I am absolutely convinced is because of all the black swan events, all the corruption and everything that happened in crypto, which impacted Bitcoin. The other thing that's very, very important to note is the recovery 2022 since 2022 is happening at a similar pace, implying that the bear market is long over, ladies and gentlemen. We are well on the recovery. And by the way, uh, the realized cap all-time high recovery typically takes between 95 and 239 days. I think, considering it's been so long, if you if you add those numbers from the bottom, add 239, that could bring us back closely to bringing the realized cap back up to where it needs to be. And again, that's also bullish, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's talk about the sideways chop. Uh, this is summed up. If you look at the markets of the last 24 hours, everything's kind of like... Flat down, Dixie, 99.96. NASDAQ, that actually shot up, right? <laughs> Since I got this, NASDAQ is now over 15,500. S&P, 4,500. So much for the bears expecting a no gains in the S&P for the next 10 years, and it's going to fall way below 3,500. Well, that didn't happen at all. Um, this is, of course, the Hopium channel. US 10-year, 3.82%, which is kind of low, but up a fraction. Bitcoin, 30K. Ethereum 1900, it's still a little bit low, but it's important to see where everything is kind of like holding. That's kind of the story today. Now, speaking of holding, there is something going on as well with the Bitcoin price momentum. <clears throat> Obviously, if you look at TA, you look at charts, you'll see the Bollinger Bands are very, very tight, which means consolidation. But it also means when they tighten up like that, typically there's an explosive movement after. But we are in July and August, which is a lazy time in the markets. But Bitcoin's momentum has reached its peak, and it's currently, you know, with these combinations of this momentum with tight Bollinger Bands, uh, you could expect a little bit of consolidation for a couple of weeks. So that's the good thing. Now, as long as Bitcoin stays above that kind of 29.5 level, as I see going up to 31.5, with a little bit of momentum, some buyer, etc., next stop, because the Bollinger Bands are tightening, I believe... If we break above 31.5, we could go straight to 33,000, and that would be exciting. I do not see 34,000 happening until we get past kind of the middle of September, early October. My theory could be completely wrong, but sometimes uh, I just try and be right 80% of the time. So Bitcoin plan B market cycle update. This is the early bull. Those little blue dots signify the early bull. And then the green is the late bull and the yellow is get out. <laughs> That's the early bear and red is the nasty bear. So uh, we are still early, but we are probably halfway through the early bull market in months. To me, that is at least seven or eight months into this bull run. So for those who are waiting for the bear to reoccur, it's not going to happen. And uh, let's talk about altcoins, actually, because we did have a very abrupt exit of Bitcoin season. And I share this every week, and it was like 14 or 16 last week. And now we're at 75, 73, which is basically altcoin month, you could argue. And this is insane. But look at that spike. And of course, this is all due to the frenzy last week, the XRP Ripple SEC case. Pew! Lit altcoins on fire, like literally lighting a stick of dynamite. Boom. It was incredible. Let's look at what happened over the last month. Everything compared to Bitcoin. You can see where Bitcoin ranks. It's there in black. Over the last 30 days, Bitcoin is up 10%. But the majority, the vast majority, we're talking 73% of the top 50 coins are beating Bitcoin, including uh, some big names if we go from left to right. Uh, Bitcoin Cash crushing it up 120%, but it's losing a bit of steam. Solana over the last month up 60%, Monero 59%, XRP 50%, uh, Synthetics 39%, and it's nice to see Aave, Maker, Chainlink also in there, Uniswap too. On the right hand side, you got Binance still getting uh, headwinds from lawsuits and FUD and everything else. I'll go down ApeCoin because it's just going to rain tokens on you forever. Don't own the ape, although I love apes, but not the coin apes. And uh, everything else you can kind of see where we are. So fun time. This is why we chase alpha. This is why we allocate to altcoins. Even though it's been ugly over the last year, um, it's time to 
add more. And they also move a lot faster, like we discussed earlier, too. So let's look at some interesting statistics. This is the layer one, layer two daily active users, top 28 chains aggregated up. You can't even see the last little one that has a little slither. That is Cosmos, uh, but it was too small to even warrant a percentage. But the point of this chart here is to show you how, you know, the big, big heavyweights attract all the users. So the top two chains make up nearly 15%. Matic, 26.4% and 19, 20% for Sol, approximately. And then the top four chains make up 75%. They are Polygon, Solana, Ethereum, and Arbitrum. I spoke a few weeks ago about the new number four player, and that is Arbitrum. They are coming up the rear, and they're coming up fast, and they're becoming substantial. But what's also interesting is we see this weird phenomenon now that I covered as well. Over the weekend, or I don't know, when, Saturday, I think. But, you know, Salo giving up the ghost of being an L1. And we covered it on DCA as well yesterday. And they're moving to be layer twos on Ethereum. So when you look at the top four tokens, two are layer twos. Two are layer ones. One is my ETH killer, not Solana. So that's where we are. Now let's dig into this data. Let's look at Avalanche. Because a lot of people have been asking me about Avalanche yesterday and um, uh, this is their Q2 summary. And there's a couple of positives here from Mazari, their new report for Q2. Daily active users for Avalanche is up 107%, 107%, which is great. They're coming back to life. But the bad news is transactions are down 18%. TVL is down 20%. NFT volume is down 40%. And the amount staked is down 5% to 61.3%. So Yes, coming back to life, daily active users, but they're not as active on the chain. So we monitor that carefully and we'll keep an eye on them to see if new life will come in and we'll update the tokenomics as well, like we do in this engine every single day. So this is another one from the SCP profiler. I just want to share this because I color coded what you need to cast your eye on. First of all, daily transaction fees and the movements in those. Obviously, if you look at ETH doing nearly 6 million in daily transaction fees, that sounds expensive compared to other chains. Tron, 1.4 million. Uh, Bitcoin, 473,000. Uh, Binance, 307,000. Binance used to be a lot higher. Something is happening in that chain and nobody is active on it like before. And you can see that. The actual fees are down over 70% for Binance. Fees are down over 75% for Bitcoin. And they're down nearly 40% for Ethereum. But cast your eyes on the green spots. Again, things are changing in this market. ZK Sync is exploding up 26% with a quarter of a million dollars in fees. And you have Solana. Uh, fees grew 39%, 55, 56,000. And Matic, fees grew 28% up to 36,000. And then I also included DEX volume here as well. Ethereum DEX volume, massive, $1.235 billion a day. Um, <laughs> if you go to the very bottom of that list, you'll see stacks. A lot of people are very excited about stacks being kind of a layer one on Bitcoin. But they do 29,000 in DEX volume, which is absolutely nothing. Okay. So the mar the, you know, if you look at that DEX volume alone as a ratio of market cap, it's completely overvalued. And then cast your eyes on the green spots. Uh, DEX volume for Bitcoin is not bad. Up green, up 47%. And then uh, what else is growing? Looking for more green here. The DEX volume Solana up over 100 million, up 172%. So that's good. That's coming back. And Matic up 30%. So that is kind of, and ZK Sync as well, up 220% on their DEX volume. So... A quick deep view as to what's growing, what's shrinking. You want to be on the things that are growing across many of these primaries. This is just two of the 69 things that we look at. Now, let's look at one other. This is the percentage of ETH uh, based on fully diluted market cap. You can see here, number one is there's been a bit of a change out there in the world. Yes, uh, Cardano was bigger last time I did this. Now you can see Solana is now 6.15% of ETH's market cap on a fully diluted basis. And uh, a month ago, it was one fortieth of ETH's market cap. And I said, that is absolutely ridiculous. That makes no sense. So it's good to see it's doubled in the last month. Uh, Cardano, 6%. Arbitrum, 5.6% of ETH's market cap. But remember, that's fully diluted. And then Avalanche, Aptos, 
And the reason I'm kind of showing this chart, I found it interesting, uh, Matic, Sui, Polkadot, Optimism. Then after that, whew, they get real small real fast near Algo, Flow, Phantom, One, Cosmos. Uh, so that's just important food for thought. All these data points are pointing to one thing. There will be four, five, maybe big winners in this run if if the crypto market stocks look at the fundamentals. If people just phone went to stuff because of what they hear on Twitter, then things could be different. But I just look at data. One other thing as well, Twitter engagement, which is very interesting. Uh, here, again, all of the stuff is from the IA Engine. SCP profiler. If you look at the top four in Twitter engagement, it's Ethereum number one, Solana number two, Matic number three, and Near Protocol is now number four. So that tells me, despite being only 0.64% of the ETH market cap, it's fourth largest in Twitter engagement. So sometimes you got to look at the buzz. That can sometimes lead to price action. I'm not sure, but we'll watch this carefully too and try to build a parallel between these data points. So let's also look at Bitcoin hash rate versus Bitcoin price. A great little chart here from Blockware Solutions. And there's a cool thing that we can take uh, next time we come to this day, because miners have just been on fire this year, up on average 400 plus percent. But during most of 2023, including July, the price of Bitcoin has been rising faster than the hash rate. Whew, at last but it leads to an increased profitability for Bitcoin miners. And bull markets are the ideal time to mine as not only are profits made, but profit margins increase dramatically. And this is raising the value of ASICs, which are the mining machines. And to maximize returns, you need to buy the machines before the bull market begins. That's why I was okay with certain names issuing stock to raise cash to buy ASICs plug them in and mine for the bull run. Now, you don't want to be buying <laughs> at the top of the bull run. That's another thing. We'll talk about that another time in my mining videos. But um, as their prices are lower, you'll be able, to buy, be able to mine more Bitcoin through this entire bullish period. And remember, I was, uh, I think it was summer 2022, the miners were getting smashed, okay? They weren't able to plug in their machines and they were selling them at like 70% discounts. Those that could scoop them up made a killing. Now they are milking it. Let's look at how this translates. This is just the last 90 days and miners continue to rip. So Wolf, 113%, HUD 8, 88%, Bitfarms, 46%, Iris Energy, 43%, Mara, 41%, Hive, 39%, CleanSpark, 37%, Riot, 35%, MicroStrategy, 35%, and Bitcoin, down 1.69%. So talk about crazy outperformance, like MicroStrategy has been crushing it compared to Bitcoin, but I'd say it kind of is going to mean revert. And if you look at these charts, I didn't even show it because I don't want to disappoint people. If you take this back year to date, <laughs> the average return is over 400%. So it'll make people sick that missed out on the minus. But I do think now they're beginning to stabilize because they can't continue to rip like this until the price of Bitcoin rips. Then they will. So let's look at uh, Tesla. Uh, and by the way, a huge shout out to everybody. We have so many crypto only people that bought their very first stock and their very first stock was Tesla at just over a hundred bucks and they made a killing. So congratulations to them. But Tesla is now up 180% in 190 days. And not just miners are ripping, but this is the big Tesla pre-split run. And there are huge tailwinds winds around all the news out there and what they're doing. Tesla is the new standard for vehicle production and AI. And uh, most other car companies are just shriveling up right now and dying. They just don't know it yet. But remember, remember, don't listen to Wall Street analysts because they think Tesla is a car company. It's not. Not at all. Speaking of that as well, let's look at some of the biggest companies on the planet. Uh, <laughs> the bogey target is a one trillion market cap. But you can see here, Apple. Uh, 3 trillion, Microsoft, 2.7 trillion, Saudi Aramco, big oil company, 2 trillion, Google, 1.6, Amazon, 1.3, NVIDIA, 1.176. Not only did they hit a trillion, they smashed right through it. Tesla, 928 billion. That means if the Tesla stock price goes up another 20 bucks, they will be in the $1 trillion club. And that is rarefied air. 
Only seven, com only six companies are in that area right now. And then Meta, 801 billion. By the way, I didn't mention for the miners, I do own Bitfarms and CleanSpark. On this previous slide, I forgot to disclose that. And on this, I have a green tick box beside everything that I own. And in full disclosure, I had a, I have four Ameritrade accounts. I didn't realize uh, one of them I bought leaps in. I completely forgot about it, rarely see it. So I have a small uh, leap position on some NVIDIA, sold the rest of them as well at the top. So it was like a nice little find. But anyway, Tesla will be hitting a trillion dollars soon. We don't know when. If, if you know, earnings are tomorrow, uh, it could be bombastic, but you got to keep an eye on things like margin. Will it get close to 20%? Will it be troughing out and going up again? Uh, also, mega pack data, very critical. And I think um, the other two things is their forward guidance regarding Cybertruck, Cybertruck pricing, and AI Day, uh, Project Highland, which is the refreshed Model 3 and all that stuff. That's going to be critical for the markets. Now, there's like 50 nuggets here. If you don't have time to listen to this, or you want the slides, or you want to listen to this again while you're jogging or running or at the gym, this podcast available, emails. We do this just to cover costs and community writers write the content for us. So 45 bucks a year, 10 to 13 cents a substack, cheapest and best and the most alpha-filled substack anywhere on the planet. So switching gears to the bad news, uh, and there is some bad news. Fear and greed did take a bit of a dip and added the last couple of weeks you know, five weeks ago, 45, then 49, 59, 62, 57, and now 56. A slight dip from a week ago. Nothing too bad. We're still up there in the greedy territory, which is good. Stock market has become very greedy, which is very interesting. Actually, I'd like to run an analysis of getting the correlation between stock market fear and greed and crypto fear and greed and see how they map. But typically, the crypto fear and greed lags the stock market fear and greed. Anyway. Let's look at the top three last week, and there have been some interesting changes, but you can see over the last week, as we covered before, ETH up 1%, Bitcoin down 1%, Binance down 2%, not a big deal. But what is interesting is this. This is some of the bad news that people are very concerned about, you know, Mungok sales, etc., and the government sales. So this is a chart from K33, and apparently the US government does plan to sell. Uh, a total of 51,600 Bitcoin seized from Silk Road back in, I think it was 2014, 2015, that type of time frame. But uh, here, they did say that they will be dumping their Bitcoin bags in five batches. They've already sold the first batch in March, leaving 41,500 remaining to be sold. The second batch, which is expected to be sold in May, uh, might move in July, indicating a delay in the selling schedule. This suggests that there may be a little bit of selling pressure from the US government in the coming months, as they will need to sell the remaining Bitcoin within a shorter time frame. I have my sniper rifle ready, so watch those times. Interesting time because, you know, the market is so big now, it can easily gobble up 15,000, 20,000 Bitcoin dumped in a day. Not a problem, but uh, it can bring about a bit of a kind of a blue light special fire sale on Bitcoin. So be ready. Now let's talk about the New World Order. This is the US stock market, market cap, divided by the US GDP. And I thought this is a very interesting piece from Zero Hedge. But basically, the current state of the US market cap, you could argue, is above that red bar, which means, uh-oh, overvalued. Currently, uh, investors value corporate America at around 1.77 times the US GDP indicating companies worth exceeding the country's output. And they do manage a lot of the output anyway. But this is about 3,000 uh, companies in the US, top 3,000. Now, the nation's GDP has grown at around 4.3% annually since the year 2000. And if this continues, the market valuation seen in 2020 may be reached by 2037 in the technology sector, inflated by valuations driven by the AI mania, etc., or causing deep negative equity risk premium. Now, my take is there are technology, that's why I say keep your eye on the disruption ball set at the very beginning. AI will drive incredible gains in efficiency and effectiveness and productivity and everything else. And therefore, I believe this is justified. If you are in the right companies, and in fact, 
a huge part of this U.S. equity makeup is made up of, where did I put these guys? Okay, don't forget, black holes that suck everything in. That's um, that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. So you got to be on that bus. So that is the new world order. Things are changing rapidly. And maybe that red threshold you see across the top there, it's a thing of the past because of the hyper level of productivity driven by things like AI. That's why I invest in AI stocks and disruption like crypto. Let's look at the Bitcoin versus QQQ uh, correlation. You can see here over the last 90 days, Bitcoin is flat and QQQ is up 17%. So you can see here, if you were just investing in the last 90 days, you would have been better off investing in the QQQ, not Bitcoin. QQQ is tech stocks, like I showed again. So let's talk about another change as well. XRP flipped Binance for the first time in forever. You can see the change in the top 10. Um, XRP is now number four. Binance is number five. And remember, it's based on the kind of circulating supply multiplied by the price. And of course, all the headwinds that Binance has had. Bitcoin, of course, number one, Ethereum, number two. I don't count stable coins. Uh, Lido is there, 8, Cardano, 9, Solana, and we have another meme in number 10. But that's just how ridiculous this world is. Anywho, time for a little bit of ugly news, and there's not too much, so don't worry too much. First of all, token dumpage so far. Uh, big ones this week, uh, 1 inch, 150,000, not too bad. Axie Infinity, 22 million. Ooh, if you're holding Axie, be careful out there. Optimism, 35 million. And Sui. Just shy of a million dollars. So nothing too he hectic. Not going to be raining too much unless, of course, you're exposed to Axie Infinity or Optimism. You're going to get drenched. <laughs> so be careful out there. And that's the end of the story today. So thank you to everybody on Patreon. I uh, love you all. love working with you all every day. I love all the questions that you give me. And it uh, keeps me extremely busy. And I want to thank all the mods in the chat and everybody out there. question is, when ETH 1 trillion... I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. But as fiat begins, continues to go down, everything will rise. So thanks, everybody. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.